good people. We are back. back. Once again, Black to the Basis, a.k.a. The People's Podcast. I am your host and one-third, Mr. J. Dye Weeks, a.k.a. 52 The Balls. Here with my man. B. Stokes, also known as Brother Knowledge. Just glad to be here. It's your boy, Jerry, and I'm blessed. Yes, What's sir. good, fellas? Yes, sir. <laughs> How y'all feeling today, man? It's a beautiful thing to be alive, baby. It is. What about you, man? Just, you know, lucky. 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 That's it, man. Lucky and blessed. So before we get started today, for those who normally watch us and listen to us on the air, you know, we always start our show, a little icebreaker. We give you our knowledge report and also keep our ears to the street with our word on the street. But Considering the times of what's going on in the United States and even throughout the world, we felt it was only right for us being the People's Podcast, we have to address the situation at hand. Absolutely. You know, we, we are the voice for the people, and uh, we want to make sure that your voices are heard loud and clear. Uh, we don't take the situation lightly here at Black to the Basics, man. So, you know. Man, with a great, great platform, man, comes great responsibility. Absolutely. And this is a great platform, man. So, we definitely want to shout out. And, and give the people what we need and just reach out to their call. Yeah, I definitely think it's important to, I mean, have this platform to address it. And, you know, like I said, this is not going to be a traditional episode by no means. Uh, we won't do our black uh, our knowledge report today, as well as we won't be going over our word on the street. But we will be addressing the situation at hand uh, from all aspects. Mm-hmm. And we hope that, you know, once this episode airs that, you know, it calls, it's a call to action, you know, and changes are implemented and we get more people involved and, and just kind of just bring this unity throughout, you know, everything that's going on right now. I mean, let's just kind of really get into it, man. I mean, how, how are you feeling right now? You know, start with you, Eric. Man, <clears throat> I'm just a mix of emotions right now, you know. Um, it's, you know, I want one minute, um, you know, I try to stay away from social media as much as possible, man, but I found right. myself uh, glued to the TV over the last couple of days. Um, not saying living in fear, but mm-hmm. just concern for loved ones. I know uh, when you know I got the call um, that the situation had just took place right here in Atlanta. I had just got home not too long before that, that kicked off. Wow. My immediate instinct was <clears throat> I know Bryce you know, is out and about. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I know yeah, he's yeah. from... Atlanta, and, and the first thing I did, I reached out and I called him, like, hey, bro, you good? Because right. if he wasn't good, then I was on my way, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And just making sure my loved ones were, you know, everybody was safe, man. And just like everybody else at home, man, just watching, and I can feel the outrage, man. Like, this is probably the first time that I've ever seen something, and, like, I have not been okay since, right. you know. So it's just a lot of emotions going on for me right now. Definitely appreciate that reach out too, because when you called me, I was actually laying down, but I'm glad I wasn't in the street. Right, right, right. <laughs> but um, one of the things, man, for me, how I feel, is just, man, open and just exposed, mm-hmm. vulnerable. You know, for you know, I've always felt not that I that I was not immortal, that I was immortal, but I feel mortal more than now than anything. Wow. When I walk out and go, you know, to the store, go to work, whatever, am I going to make it home? Now, those are some things that cross my mind. And, and my objective now is just to get home. Make it home safe. <laughs> make it home safe. It's crazy. And, you know, you really, truly feel mortal when you see men that are now in your age group passing away. Mm-hmm. And, and not passing away because of, you know, at one point you natural thought of people, natural right. causes, you thought people die because they get old, get right. sick. Nah, you passing away from another sickness. Right. Yeah. Um, about you, which, man, for me, it's I, I can, you know, uh, share you know both sentiments. Like with you, I'm, it's mixed emotions for me. Um, one minute I'm like, okay, let me let me step off social media and kind of just be to myself. Other minutes uh, I'm outraged, I'm upset, I'm angry. Um, I, I, it's like there's so many things you want to do, but you you have to kind of sit back and like, okay, what's the best course of action? Um, and I think for me, this is, I mean, we've seen, we've seen this movie several times, yes, you know, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's only so long you can keep, you know, poking the bear, keep playing with the situation before eventually, it's gonna you know, it's going to blow up. Right. And I feel like it's got to that point where 
there's so many times we have to just just forgive and move on, forgive and move on, forget about this, forget about slavery, forget about civil rights, forget about this, forget about that killing of this person. That was old. That was two years ago. That was 30 years ago. It was 400 years ago. And it's like, at what point is it enough? And I think for me, it's just like, why are we always the ones that have to forgive? Forgive and just forget. Just forget everything that ever happened. It, it, it's always been like that, man, and it goes back from generations before us. Mm -hmm. um, now, I know the whole misconception is that, you know, the generation before us, they didn't protest. They weren't out there fighting on the front lines, but that is far from the truth. Um, the they we even can do what can we can have do now. a platform to speak. Right. Um, right. And I, I see a lot of people throwing the Malcolm and Martin, uh, you know, comparisons out there as far as like how one person handled the situation versus the other. They both had the same message. And you can see it right now. You got people that are peacefully trying to make a difference. And then you got people that are uh, outraged and that anger from just pent up. And, it, and it's, it's coming out. It's just enough is enough. You know what I'm saying? But you made a, a Malcolm and, and Martin point. One of the things that people don't even pay attention, their message started to sound similar. The older they got into their to lives, the later they got into the, you know, their living. Who they were. Yeah, yeah. Who they were, you know. And it's... One of the things we find ourselves in this time that we're in, my grandfather finds himself in this time. I'm sure his, his my dad finds himself in this time. You think about, you know, my grandfather going through the 60s, Alabama, mm -hmm. going through that. Think about my granddad here in Atlanta, you know, down south in Savannah, going through mm -hmm. what he was going through. Then I think about my dad in the 80s, 90s, you know, Rodney King, those riots, Mega Man March, those type of things going on, and other aspects of police brutality and other things happening that we don't, that didn't make the news for real, you know, right? The worldwide news. Right. But then now, present day, I'm experiencing it. Right. I'm, I'm sitting here hurt because black men are, are dying left and right at the hands of the police, people supposed white to people, right. uh, things like that. People that, people that we deem to be those that protect and serve. It's, it's tough, man. And you know what's crazy, man? We just, on the 31st of May, it was the anniversary, 99 years of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, yeah. Oklahoma. And for those of you who are listening to us, and some of you may listen to the first time this episode, we did a whole episode mm -hmm. called Black Wall Street. Absolutely. And we just talked about, mm -hmm. you know, Black Wall Street and the significance of this this township of how mm -hmm. these all these black businesses were prominent and just how it went down with, you know, just the destroy, looting, mm -hmm. right, you know, it's all types of, you know, destruction. I just think what you know, and when you see the news reports talking about, you know, this person is looting, these thugs and stuff like that. So here's the thing, man, like, you know, we learned that, you know, from them. You know what I'm saying? From from white people. Like, um, white people have, and this is not a black and white thing, clear cut, but a lot of stuff that we do and implement, we, we y'all have, have given us the blueprint, uh, whether you want to admit it or not. Mm -hmm. When you see these people out here, you know, breaking into things, this is not, you know, now some people are, I will say, are taking advantage of a situation. However, the majority of people are now, this is the anger. We tried to... We tried the kneeling thing, right? Okay, nobody listened. You know what I mean? We we tried to do the peaceful protests, and now people are fighting back. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, the more people are using that energy, but can can guide it in a different way mm -hmm. to make a change. You know, it, it's gonna it, it'll get better. But until the others are are, are as, as outraged as we are, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm just a mix of emotions right now. But until that happens nothing's going to change. We're going to be out here doing the same thing over and over again, and, and, and I've had enough. I'm tired of turning on the news and seeing another situation happen, and nothing is being done about it. Yeah, and I can honestly say, you know, when if I remember being in middle school and watching Eyes on the Prize, you know, talking about Dr. King and what was going on with the Civil Rights Movement, mm -hmm. and a lot of times you see things, and, you know, like for your grandparents or even maybe your parents if you have parents that are older, and you look at those things, sometimes it doesn't really become that real to you because it's like, uh, you see it, but
but you don't really experience it. So you don't understand the struggles that, you know, your parents or even your grandparents had to deal with. But now when you can not only hear about these things, now with the boom of technology and social media, you're seeing it every day, real time. every hour, every minute. Like you were getting fed this 24 hours a day. And I even remember, like I said, seeing Eyes on the Prize the first time, and it messed me up for like a week. I couldn't yeah, even go back to class. Like it, it yeah. really bothered me to the point of, yeah. and my biggest thing was like, why? Why is there so much hatred and anger when it comes to me just because of how someone looks? Man, and it bothered me. You just said something so prolific. I think about those movies that I used to watch when I was a younger kid. Um, like the Ruby Bridges stories, where they'll show those clips. They wouldn't be even real time, but they're just so clips. Clips, right. Ruby Bridges story, the mm-hmm. Honor Prize, those type of movies, or even documentaries that mm-hmm. would be on GPB TV that'll show you the civil rights movements and see people getting attacked by dogs and beat by brutally by the police. Mm-hmm. How that would affect me at that age, right? I wonder, am I now desensitized to it? Because I, it's it's every day. Right. I open my phone, I turn on the news. I, 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 I get on Google. I mean, whatever. Every day is something that I see this. And I and it seems so far mm-hmm. ago and so long ago when it was black and white. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Now and, and now that it's in living color, right? We living in this moment. Right. We experience it every day. Like you said, the, the social media aspect is allowing us to see it all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's so bad to the point where at times you see it so much it's like you kind of you do get desensitized yeah because you're not even oh okay another one all right and then not only that it's like okay we we see these happen then there's not enough evidence then we see live proof of evidence and everything the narrative changes Mm -hmm. this is get thrown in so you get frustrated and i and i feel like at this point it's reached its breaking point we've tied like and to your point er we've tried to do the peaceful thing yeah you know, they ostracized cat. They talked yeah. back. I mean, did everything in the world to someone who was just simply taking a knee. And it was never, this proves his point. This was never about the military disrespecting the flag. It was about the killing of unarmed black African-American men in the United States and nothing is being done about it. Mm-hmm. Nothing's being done about it. And, and, you know, like I said, man, it's just to a point where now, what do we do? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I, I'm in my 30s. Okay, and you got you know the younger generation behind us, and once again they are you know this the millennial, the tech savvy generation, and they have the energy to fight back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not saying we don't, but it's a different way now. And you see it. I mean, people are like you know not saying you should be afraid of the police, but you know like I said, I watched it on TV, man, and you know they are out there in full force, and they are driving points home. You know what I mean? But you said something about fight back, right? That don't necessarily even have to be physical. Correct. Mm-hmm. You think about these millennials or the younger people, the younger wave of people that are out here making making their voices heard. They're they, they a, a cop. They know their address. They know their wife. They can do all of that through that technology tool, mm-hmm. huh? and they can say, "Hey, we're we're, we're gonna find everything about this person." What they eat, they social, they everything, well, they, their friends and all of that. It gives you access. It gives you access, right? But it's like, okay, I wish my, my my forefathers or my ancestors had access to this type of stuff. Because I promise you some things would totally be different. Martin Luther King, I wish he had access to some of his oppressors and the true facts. Because they had access to him. You know, the crazy thing about Martin, man, like I've seen it, like, you know, a bunch of people quoting Martin Luther King. Well, he wouldn't want this. He wouldn't do that. Y'all killed him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can't quote some things and try to spread that message now when he was spreading that message. Mm-hmm. You killed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Dr. King was definitely about, I mean, when it came down to it, Dr. King was definitely about change. Mm-hmm. You know, change, equality, you know, he, he was all about it when it came down to it. But even from the aspect of just like law enforcement, yeah. us all being black men, have you had any encounters when it comes to just law enforcement or any any situations with that? Man, um, I could go back to the earliest account that I can remember. Um, probably when I was 12, 13, we were playing up in um, Dalton, Georgia, mm. um, playing baseball. Um, it was a championship game. It got really heated. We beat this undefeated team, a uh, group of all-white, all-white team. Uh, we were there, and it got really heated because 
one of the last plays of the game, one of my uh, teammates, Rest in Peace E, he, um, he ran into the catcher. Mm-hmm. The catcher dropped the ball. Now, when that happens, in the stands, the families are starting to get heated because this is live in the moment. Right, right. <laughs> my, you hit my son. Mm-hmm. This is going in this, in that. Right. Calling slurs, going back and forth. Ends up, they call the police on our team. And I mean, when I tell you, we outright run, won the game because that was the end of the game. He right. did that to end the game. Right. And it was kind of a back and forth. The family started going at it. The players started to kind of have a clash. It was just a real live black, white. Mm-hmm. No Good. difference. But they called the police on our team saying that we you know, were starting this and starting that. People, They said people had a gun. None of this stuff had went on. So similar to all the situations we said. Similar stuff to all. Right. So when I tell you, every police, I believe, it had to be a scene because there had to be like 10 to 12 police cars. Wow. In this small town of Dalton, Georgia, which is an hour and a half away, drove into the city, man, and I'm driving to that to that ballpark. Had to surround it, had all of this. But it was kind of crazy because this was one of the first times all of the men, of the, the fathers of the players, mm-hmm. forced them to give us our trophies for our win. Wow. Forced us to give us that. Wow. Made them pay our respects. But it was just one of those things where they came aggressively at us, but the men stood up. The men unified and stood up to that. And I, but I, as a child, you fearful. Yeah. You like the police? Where are all these police coming? What's right. going on? But they don't. They didn't have a problem with that. They had a problem with it because they lost. They had a problem because we were black. And they had a problem, escalated. and it escalated. But they, but they came out, guns out, ready to do whatever, tasers out. But it was just a matter of seeing. That experience as a child, you like, it ain't because you because yeah. you lost. You didn't have a privilege in life. You, you lost, didn't have that step up. Lost you didn't have black. the things that you need. You lost somebody black. Not because you lost to a ball player. You lost to somebody black. And that is the problem that is going on in today. You're losing to black people because we're the best in business. We're the best in <laughs> sports. We're the best in whatever. And because you can't, don't have a leg up truly up against us, right. you want to put your neck on, put your foot on our neck and right. knock us down and choke us out. People are always afraid of what they don't understand. People, man. Right. That's I'm crazy saying. to force in, man. I, I, and mine was about same age, about 13 or 14. I can remember yeah. just being outside, me and a couple of my boys, just being outside, just playing, nothing yeah. in particular. And this is when a group of like three or four police officers rolled up on bikes. And they start asking us questions. Hey, what, what you guys doing here? Crazy. We live here. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. We're hanging out, just chilling, you know. They next, you know, they make us all stand in line. They ask and they search us. So we're being imagine being 13, 14, and you have four or five police officers oh, man. patting you down, asking you a billion questions, and you just confused as to well, what do we do? Oh, wrong. Man. Like what happened? Um, and even from that moment on, that was 13, 14. Flash forward to me being in college at 22, 23, coming back home to visit, and I'm walking through the area. And, you know, if you grew up in a neighborhood that may have been not a great neighborhood at the time, they gentrify the area, it changes. Mm -hmm. So I come through the area, which normally is where I grew up at. (laughs) And I see a police car, you know, way back, maybe a couple, a little bit back behind me, and they just follow me. And I notice I go to the street, they follow me. Go to the street, and finally, you know, they run up on me like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you here? I'm like, I'm walking to the store in the neighborhood. What am I doing? You have your ID on you? You have any drugs? Like, what? I'm just walking to the store. So me being 13, 14, and seeing that, and then being an adult, seeing the same thing, like, what are you following me for? What are you questioning years for? later, bro. So it's just seeing that at an early age, as much as people try to, you know, say, well, it's not about this, not about that, there is a there is a disconnect, and there is a big issue when it comes to law enforcement and people of color. There's mm-hmm. no way around it. Mm-hmm. And whether you want to admit it or not, there is an issue. And big experience. This, this bigger thing has, has started from that because, again, we're seeing the same story. You mentioned Rodney King. We've seen that story. Mm-hmm. We've seen evidence. We've seen people walk. Mm-hmm. We've seen our young black teens, our young black boys kill for no reason. Kill for no reason, and it's nothing being done. So on one hand, yeah, people want to you know voice their opinions and say this and that, but 
if you're upset and you're outraged, you have to say something. You can't just sit back and take it. And one thing is, man, you can't tell people how to feel, yeah. uh, you know, or, or express an emotion. Correct. So everybody displays anger differently. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, people see, like I said, people or just out. feelers in general. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> feelers in general, man. So you can't sit up and see these people on TV and say, oh, man, they're acting like this, they're acting like that, because I'm going to bring up a situation uh, back in Virginia in Charlottesville. I know y'all remember yes. that. Yes. No, y'all remember that situation. You know, I won't say his name, but a certain someone got up to that podium and made comments about the events that took place, and it was nothing. They were not described as thugs or anything mm-hmm. like that. But now we're described as thugs, mm-hmm. and we're, you know, ignorant and all that because people are, you know, expressing themselves. Man, listen, I'll tell you what. The last couple of days I've been on an unfollow block spree uh, of people on my friends list because here's the thing. You can't say that you're for me or we are friends and you're, you're silent. Man, or you're, you're quiet right now. Or you're saying, well, you know, there's a there's a, another way to handle it. Mm-hmm. That may be true. But right now, you can't tell people how to feel. And you ask the question, how would you handle it? Mm-hmm. Can you walk in my shoes? No. No, they can't. Because I, I, I have a post, man, that I saw. And, I, and, and if you don't mind, can I, can I read it out? Go ahead, man. So the, this was uh, one of my friends who is white that is on the front lines. Shelly, shout out to you. She definitely is, you know, a part of the movement for change. Mm-hmm. She put a post up, and I definitely she spoke on her white privilege. And so these are some of the things that um, she had here. She said, "Because of my white privilege, I can do all these things without thinking twice. I can go jogging, Ahmad Arbery. I can relax in the comfort of my own home. Atiana At- Jefferson." And Sean, and both both them Sean. That's his name. She got it backwards. Okay, <laughs> I can ask for help after being in a car crash. Jonathan Pharrell and Renisha McBride. I can have a cell phone. Stephon Clark. I can leave a party to get to safety. Jordan Edwards. I can play loud music. Jordan Davis. I can sell CDs. Alton Sterling. I can sleep. Ayanna Jones. I can walk from the corner store, Mike Brown. I can play cops and robbers, Tamir Rice. I can go to church, the Charleston Nine. I can walk with Skittles, Trayvon Martin. I can hold a hairbrush while leaving my own bachelor party, Sean Bell. I can party on New Year's, Oscar Grant. I can get a normal traffic ticket. Sandra Bland. I can lawfully carry a weapon for Lando Castile. I can break down on a public road with car problems. Corey Jones. I can shop at Walmart. John Crawford. I can have a disabled vehicle. Terrence Crutcher. I can read a book in my own car. Keith Scott. I can be a 10-year-old walking with our grandfather. Clifford Glover. I can decorate for a party, Claude Reese. I can ask a cop a question, Randy Evans. I can cash a check in peace, Yvonne Smallwood. I can take out my wallet, Amadou Diallo. I can run, Walter Scott. I can breathe, Eric Gardner and George Floyd. I can live, Freddie Gray. Think about this. Think about this. These people that I've just named have all been impacted by police brutality. White people can get up and do this with no problem. But these people are doing normal, everyday tasks that are brown, that are black, just like you and me. The problem with that is, man, um, and I believe that cops no longer police the areas that they live in. Correct. So, you know, you if you... I know back in the day, man, I know, you know, police don't get a good rap, right? But where I grew up, we had the same officers. You know what I'm saying? We would get into trouble. Officers knew who we were. We knew who they were. You know what I mean? So nine times out of ten, if something happened, we know who was coming, whatever the situation is. So not saying you build a trust, but you, you know what you're dealing with, mm-hmm. the situation. And they live in the areas where they police. So what what better way to change your, your area if you are actually you know, protecting the area that you live in. Mm-hmm. If you don't live in that area and you just go to that area to police that area, then of course you're going to have 
crazy situation because they don't have to see it. They can go do their job and then leave and go back to wherever they come from. You and know what I mean? It's so sad because, like you said, you're going to put value into somewhere where you live. Absolutely. You're going you're gonna to pour positivity into somewhere where you live. If you don't care, doesn't make if you difference. don't live there, you don't care. Don't make a difference. I honestly feel like the value has been gone. And like you said, to your point, even me, I growing up in Alexandria, PA, you know, where we lived at, you knew all the police officers. Mm -hmm. You know who you know who was gonna be jump outs, you know like you knew. You knew what was going on. And more importantly, they knew. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's that's such and such. This is his brother, this is his mom. Yep. They see you, hey man, come on. We doing this again? Yep. They would sit down and talk to you. And as much as, you know, we have that disconnect of like, we don't really want to be associated with that, you knew who they were. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now the message has got away from the main thing you took oath to say, protect, protect and serve. And serve. Mm -hmm. Protect and serve. Mm -hmm. You are serving the community and you are protecting that community. So it seems like now people, it's more about power. It ain't about protecting nobody. It's not about serving. It's about I have a badge. I have a gun. You gonna do whatever I say. You, I t uh, whatever I tell you to do because of what I represent. Think the about, entity of what I have. Think about it like this, man. Two points, right? You would rather arrest thousands of people for, protest, for protesting when you just could have made four. Mm -hmm. Just could have been. That'd have been it. Well, or think about Michael Vick. Okay, shout out to Michael Vick, VA, all day. <laughs> Michael Vick has done more time in prison Thousands. than any probably any of these cops mm -hmm. that have been charged not right, so, been char combined. Combined. All right. And I'm not condoning what Mike Vick did, but you you understand what I'm but saying. But it's more value placed on, on a than, dog's uh, life than a, than, a than an beings. actual human being. That's that's a problem. You know that's a problem. It's sad, man, because if you think about you think about your Michael Vicks, you think about the people that have truly been wrongly accused that have had to sit down and really do some time, right? These people are also coming out trying to fit a narrative created by white people to say, hey, I'm better. Look at me now. I'm not that. I'm, I'm changed. Mm -hmm. But you didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, you did something that was that broke the law, yes. But it's people out here that are breaking the law every day that have a badge on. And then nothing's and happening. And nothing is happening to them. Michael Vick, couldn't, they couldn't even own the dog. Man, he's he still can't. Yeah, yeah. Think mm. about that, man. Not only did you go serve your time, and you lost all your money, you lost all your, all your endorsement, hit deals. rock bottom, you hit rock bottom, left for dead, and you, you know, you've done all that, and you still have to like he. They didn't even want him to be the ca uh, captain of the Pro Bowl team yeah. because of what he did. And people wrote, years ago, yeah, they wrote those. They did a petition. They did a petition. But, man. but you have for someone who served their time. You have people that are defending the actions of that cop. Anybody that I've seen posting uh, pictures. Oh well, he could have blocked instantly because you don't get it. And until it's affecting you and your people, either keep your mouth shut or just you know, no, yeah. just whatever, man. Because it's yeah, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> nah, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's real. We you said something about the oath. Yes. You know these, the oath that these officers take. You think about the police, the first police, you know, department created in Boston, right? That was created to protect the the barter coming in and out of. Ports and the ships. Mm -hmm. Then you look at as time progressed, police was created to do what? Control slaves. Yep. Watch the marshals and people to make sure that slaves are in line. Mm -hmm. Then you look at as it goes on, KKK. goes on further, the KKK mm -hmm. branched off of a, a, a party within the police department. Mm -hmm. And now you look they at needed, they need they, people they, to they make sure people. that hey, we, they're doing a little bit. Gov too much. Let's govern those let's folks. Go ahead and you know, you be a polite police officer. We're gonna get fired, fired doctor. We're gonna get all these things. Mm -hmm. And so you look at now. Let's talk present day, right? Yep. You think about police. We have police that are black. We have police that are brown, but we also have police that are white. Now, when you think about that, the the that that mixture of people. Some people that some people that are police that are black and brown. Still have some don't don't practice some of the ideologies of looking out for their own or doing the right things, and it's not even looking out for your own, doing the right things. That's right. Because it's a moral thing at this point. Correct. Do, what do you feel? How do you do? Do you look at the heart of a person or the skin of a person? Do you judge someone before you get a chance to know them or invest time into, like you said, knowing their mama, knowing their parents, knowing the community that you police, right. or is it just something that you're doing as a job? Yeah, but see, for me, like, I, 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 I'm I, on kind of both sides of the fence, right? Because my mother-in-law is, re is a retired police, uh, 
police detective Shout out uh, from the city of Brunswick, Georgia. And then I have an uncle, David Alexander, that's running for sheriff. That's Cola, Florida. Shout out to Uncle David. So when I say, when people say all cops are not bad, right? right. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at these two individuals that the reason why they became cops is because they, made a change. they wanted to make a difference right. in their neighborhoods, in their communities. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, when people say that, I, I get it. I get it, people. But you do have people that are on the front lines that are actually trying to make a difference. The problem is it's not enough of them mm -hmm. and it's not enough people willing to stand up and say what's right because what do you hear? Police, we're a brotherhood. We do this, we they do that. They are the majority. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of like do you go up against your own knowing mm -hmm. the things that can go on behind the scenes or do you stand up and take that risk? You know what I'm saying? So. I think, you know, people have to understand that as well, too, man. Just because you see a black person with a badge on, you can't just say, oh, you, you a pig, you this, you that, you a sellout. That's not always the case. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? So, But, I mean, that, and I, and I feel what you're saying, but sometimes it just comes from a real place. It does. You know, mm -hmm. Even myself, you know, I don't have any family members that are police officers. Um, but I can, for me personally, any encounter, I've never had an encounter where it was an encounter with a police officer that I was like, oh, that was a good action. That doesn't say I'm going around saying all cops are bad. Right, right. I think the bigger issue that people are saying is like, yeah, there are great cops, but the same way we need other races and other people, groups of people to speak up, we need those good cops to continue mm -hmm. to not only make a difference in their neighborhood, but you got to speak out on these things. Absolutely. But like you said, it's the thing, do I really go against that? Sure. We see it on movies all the time, and not to go with fictitious, but we see on movies where they have the one dirty cop, and they're like, <laughs> hey... We all dirty, and you got the cop that's like, I'm not really dirty, but it's like, what you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. Like someone was gonna have to take that step and say, you know what? We need to unify to say, hey, this isn't right. And I can say that I have seen a few videos with a couple Thanks. of the officers saying, look, that was completely, it was wrong. I don't know. What it was completely murder. And I mean, we don't have to see a video a hundred times to see that that was incorrect. It was wrong. Like it was murder. Right. There's mm -hmm. no way around it. But when you constantly see people that are hired and hired to protect us, to serve this community, and you are using your badge or authority for different things, it's it's horrible to see that. And so people come and have this notion that, okay, I'm a police officer, I have this power. But again, that's why you have people saying, like, you work for me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and there you go, right? My, you think about it, and, and I've seen so many, because let's talk about it, right? I have I have friends that are police officers, friends that have worked as police officers and had to just say, hey, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So think about that now. You've got people that are invested in the Boys in Blue Club. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got others that are, hey, I have to just step back and be like, man, I'm a human. Because they try to make I you decide. Are you blue I'm, I'm, or I'm, I'm, I'm human. But you know what, though? I bleed. The, the Boys in Blue, they bleed red, too. That's right. true. So now, we that, all human. that is so true. Now, when I say that, I think about the people that have, like you said, that difference. Say, okay, I got to step away because this, this, some of the things that I'm asked to do don't line up right. with me morally. Now, you do have some good cops that are doing everything they can. Shout out to my man, Trey McTeer. Mm -hmm. He's out there doing a great thing for the community in an area where he's mm -hmm. one of a few wow. black police. One of probably less than I can name on one hand. Now, he's doing everything he can. Like, this dude is in the community, showing his face, doing all of that. But then I asked the question, is that enough? Is that enough? Let me tell you something else, too, man. And this might show my age a little bit because I know, you, you know, you're a little, you know, a little younger. <laughs> little whip uh, the whip snapper. Uh, <laughs> if you remember the, the PAL League, I don't know if y'all know, mm -hmm. the Police Athletic League. Okay. So when I was growing up, right, we had the Police Athletic League. They had events, sport events. But the, the good thing about this league, right, there, you know, of course, cops were involved. But these cops were coaches. Mm -hmm. They take their badges off. You, the cops are coaching your baseball team, mm -hmm. your basketball team. So you build that 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 trust or familiarity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With the police officer, not only do you get to know them, they get to know you. Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't. I mean, it's kind of still around. But I think it's just it's so much a divide right now that you right. people don't even want to be associated with somebody that's a cop. And that's a problem as well, too. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, people, I, I understand I am, I am as outraged, as angry as everybody else is out here. But when do we say, once again, enough is enough? Mm -hmm. 
And mm-hmm. when do we orchestrate the change? I saw more celebrities last week or week before last talk about it, comment on the 6 9 situation. Now, mm-hmm. that's another totally different situation. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you have people that were just online, oh, he this, he that, don't support him. And now that your voices need to be heard, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying it's your responsibility, mm-hmm. okay? But you have the power, you have the voices to reach the masses, and people are quiet. So I don't want to, you know, people can always protest from the comforts of their home. Mm-hmm. It's easy to say Black Lives Matter from your house. Right. Yep. When are you going to get out and, and use the power to, that you have? Like get I saw, people. you know, Stephen Jackson, you know, Jamie Foxx. It's been a lot J. of Cole. people. J. Cole, uh, Norris Cole. Uh, I saw Michael B. Jordan. I saw uh, LeBron. Yeah, and the Lakers. Lakers. A lot of yeah, Lakers. A lot of Lakers. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I just, you, this is the time, people, to use your power, your influence to implement change. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of seeing the, the posts from the crib. Like, yeah, I don't just take a quote. Well, and, you well, know what I mean? Even what's, what's worse than that now, and I think this is the time to t- talk about that, is that people that are doing things, and it may be, you let's say you have an idea of, hey, we should do X. And then this person may say, well, we should do Y. But instead of saying, hey, we should do both, it's like, don't do X. That's stupid. Yeah, like, yeah. It's almost like because someone chooses one way, that's, a, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it's supposed to be, to divide and conquer. That's so it. I feel like now all the things we need all of them. Every so idea, bring it to the table. If you want to sit there and march and and, and peacefully protest, do great. It. If you want to go on social media and bring awareness and say, "Hey, let's get these group of people," do let's it. do that. I think now is the time we need all. We need all parties Man. on deck, all hands on deck. If we could take it to a sports reference, in sports is a time where hey, everybody, hey, it's your time. Mm-hmm. Your number get called, and I feel like we've been sitting on the bench for a long time. Time to get up. We've been sitting there talking about all the things we're outraging our cry. Now it's Big time facts. to put it into motion, and it's not about saying hey, you don't do this, you don't do that, but it's saying hey, we need you right now. Game is on the line. We need you in. So all the people that are influencers from mm-hmm. the media, definitely. When you need a product that you're trying to push or yes, a service sir. that you're doing, you you want us to do it. So we need that same in return. Absolutely. So this is a call to action to say everyone. We need all hands on deck. It's yeah. not about saying this person should. We don't care about that. Nah. Whether you agree with people doing this or that, that's fine. The one message that change has to happen. Absolutely. And the only way unity. it's going to come is through unity. And I will stand on that and say it. I am saying personally for myself, I want to be a part of the change. Mm. So if y'all have something for us, hey, B2B, we need y'all to get involved in this. We're all about changing yeah, the yeah. narrative. You know, when it comes down to it, we say we're the people podcast yes. for a reason. And we mean we are designed specifically to push the voice of the people. Absolutely. We're here for the culture. We're not just about streams and, right. and just saying that we have a podcast just to get on here and talk. Three yeah. guys just talking our thoughts. We want to evoke change. We want to push our coach. We want to highlight. We want to celebrate. Yes. So the fact that we're having this conversation saying this is a call to action. We need everybody. Mm-hmm. So don't feel like, hey, this idea is stupid. It's too small. Yep. I feel like everyone, I, I don't know if you feel the same. I feel like we need everybody and involved in this. When, when all this happened, what was the first thing I did? Like I like I called and said, hey, bro. Well, I, I think I text first. And yeah. I'm like, we, gotta talk we about have it. responsibilities. That's right. Um, to, you know, not only address the situation, but, you know, just listen to the people and make sure that all of our voices are heard. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, we have a, a great opportunity. We, we are blessed to be in this situation mm-hmm. and to make sure that the information gets out there. Right. So once again, like I, I, I stress to people all the time, like, you know, this is a family thing. Like, if right. you've been supporting us since day one, and even to our new supporters, listen. Right. One thing about us, we are for the people. This is uh, this is our platform. This is a this is a family thing, man. So, just want you to know, we are listening and we are here to invoke change. I know I sound a little excited right now, man, but it's just, I, I, it's just we it's we need it because fast. I mean, if you look at it. On one hand, it's disheartening to see someone so much division as mm-hmm. far as, oh, this is stupid. Why are they doing this? And seeing people outraged for the wrong reasons. Yes. We, we, it's, it's like the effect of when you're in school and the bully picks on people all the time and then mm-hmm. the bully finally, you know, that, 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 that kid gets tired of it. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he knocks the bully out. That's yeah. it. We can't cry wolf for the bully that's been bullying us this whole time. No. Be outraged of, of, of the action of what actually happened. 
Yes. That's the response of what happened. So take this time to say, hey, I may not agree with how you're going. Maybe this is another way. Or maybe I like how what you're doing. I'm going to stay on this side. Like, it's more than one way to go about things. The same way this whole system of oppression when it comes to <laughs> systemic racism has been built. That it, It's built a reason. They didn't build it one way. They did everything. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to make sure you stay in this area. Yes. Cover all bases. We're going to make sure when it comes to jobs, we hold on to the jobs. We're going to make sure you can't do this thing. You can't go to these neighborhoods. So the same way this system was mm-hmm. built, let's destroy it. Let's, it's, Man, change has to be evoked. You just said something. Strong a system. Yes, we have to create a system where we are impacting people where it matters most. Yes, financially, impacting their families, and impacting this systematic foundation. Correct. So those things right there, and the way we do that, hey, shop black, shop with your own. You put your resources together to say, hey, we're going to come together to be able to do our do what we do. Yes, the families, hey. We, 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 if we impact your money, guess what else it affect? Those other miles you got to feed. Exactly. It's going to affect those, without, without a doubt. All right. And also, our voices being heard by going to vote, by using those rights that we Absolutely. have, right. using those things to be able to go, not just the big presidential election, local. your local. local, your commissioners, your 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 mayors, school your boards, school boards, school your boards. sheriffs, your superintendents, whoever. We have to get black, too. What that is, right? Because that's us. Black to the system of just unity. Yes. You know what I mean? It's just this one thing. Unity and collaboration can 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 do so much, has so much power. Man. If you look at any change that, that came from from us, mm-hmm. it all came from the standpoint of unity. Mm-hmm. From Harry Tubman, man. from Nat Turner. Man. Uh I mean every even look, we can look at present day Barack Obama. Yep. He came, his missus was yep. changed. And the only way he was doing that, it wasn't just about Hey, just about just think it was about unifying mm-hmm. as a whole. Right. Mm-hmm. We can evoke the change. So it's no longer it's time out for all this. Hey, all the petty stuff, put it to the side. Yeah. Put your feelings to the side. If you're someone that can't just say, hey, you know, we don't need all the narratives of this is stupid, y'all mm-hmm. should we don't need that. Yeah. This is not the time to sit there from the couch and, and be two thumb teddy on, on Twitter and Facebook <laughs> and Instagram. Twitter, and Twitter fingers. fingers. Twitter fingers. You know I hate that, man. I've said it in Previous episodes before, I, I I like I just really just irks my nerves that you know I and I call I'm not gonna then what never mind I don't want to say what I was about to say <laughs> but you know I just I just oh, I just despise that man like you know if you're gonna do change don't use social media just to repost something that you saw Let's be a change be a change in your community I'm not asking people to go out and change the world just go change the world that you live in man right? and change you said something in. the narrative right yes the media is going to create their own. But which is the to, biggest thing Which right is now. the biggest thing. But we have to create our own and control what we can control. Absolutely. Yes. If we can do that and say, hey, I'm going to control my actions, yes. control where my money's going, yes. control where my, my just energy is going, yep. we could care less about what the media says because the truth will then show itself eventually. Before. And that's what's happening now. The, the, everything that we're seeing is being fueled by what the, the narrative of this is the media is showing this. We're seeing all the negative things. Mm-hmm. I know you mentioned about your brother in, in Florida, right? Yeah, so uh, shout out to my, my brother Kyle Cole, uh, CEO out. of Cool Living. Cool. Um, yeah. A couple of days ago, he was online on Facebook, started out as a rant. Like, he mm-hmm. just, you know, just, I'm tired of what's going on. So, yes. to shorten the story, they had a mural at the Pensacola Graffiti uh, Bridge. And some races to face the mural mm-hmm. of Mr. Floyd, right? Okay. So instead of them going out and breaking up stuff, what they did was they unified and they painted this very famous bridge all black. Mm. What started out with five people on a Facebook Live ended up being hundreds. And they just was on the news. Um, they, I mean, it was a peaceful protest. Uh, the, the police department came out. There's a picture you see my brother, the police chief talking. Right. They mm-hmm. end up shaking hands and they end up hugging. Now, I'm not saying that's how it needs to happen, but just something but so just look, small. Look how something uh, started off as a rant mm-hmm. ended up bringing people. people. Yep. We have the power. The people that have millions and hundreds of thousands of people yes. following them. Use your voice. Use your voice. We vote yeah. this change. Imagine if we can do it on a larger scale. Yeah. Where they say, hey, well, on today, we're going to all meet up here. We're going to do X, Y, Z. That's exactly mm-hmm. what happened. That's what I'm saying. That's but, it. But something that's simple. So don't think that your idea is so small. I'm sure when your brother did the post, he wasn't thinking, oh, I'm going to get thousands of people. No, he, he was probably just he, voicing, he was voicing what he had to say. 
And even when I called him, and he was like, bro, he said, I had no idea that people were going to. He said, I just was saying how That's I said. It. He said, if nobody showed up, great. I wanted my voice to be Letting heard. his voice be Hundreds heard. Hundreds of people came out. And not only was it black people, you had white people out there, all different races that understand, like, hey, this is a problem. Yes. Now, until other races of color recognize that this is not just a black problem. This is a problem of America. That's when change is going to, is going to happen. So, you know, your silence speaks volumes. Okay. Yeah. If you don't know what to say, don't say it at all. Okay. Just make sure it is in a positive way. Let's, you know? Yeah, let's, to, let's unify, man. I, I, I love that story that, that you make that change. Man, voice being heard. You know, you see that 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 quote out there. If you're silent, you are just as complicit. Right. Yep. And, 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 and your brother didn't let his one voice impact hundreds, impact others. That's what we're doing with us here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you see people doing around the world. Yeah. Right. The world is impacted by I this. I saw, uh, what was it, in the Berlin? Berlin. Yes. Like, just, I mean, it, you got <laughs> people that were on lockdown from their countries, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, they just disregarded that to get out and just show the unity that they understand is a problem. And, and that's what it takes. It takes, it, you know, we can't do it alone. Right. It takes everyone saying, you know what? This is wrong. Mm-hmm. This system de- needs to change. Mm-hmm. We've seen Killer Mike, shout out to Killer Mike and T.I. speaking in Atlanta mm-hmm. about bur- burn the system down. We need to change the narrative. It's going to take us to strategize, to build. Mm-hmm. We need to do that. And the only way we can do that, we need everybody on that. Yes. It's a call for all yes. hands yes. on that. We are definitely going to be a part of this change for it. And we, we want to continue to move, and not just for just right now, but just as a whole. Yes. It's all about change. It's change has to happen. That's it. And it's like I said, it. it's time out for all this. <laughs> like, forget all the posts and the, yes. the stuff and the, the funny stuff. That's cool. But now it's time to, to put it into play. Man, so to those people that, like you said, to those celebrities that have it, we need all that money. We need all that, man. Got to have the energy, man. Gotta, gotta keep that energy, man, because at the end of the day, you know, if you guys are being silent, it's just like, you know, it's just another, it's another outrage. Right. We're going to let them run around and then once they die down and then what happens next? A whole, another situation will happen. Like I'm, I'm asking people, if you're listening, yes. I'm asking right now from, from the B2B podcast, man, get out and, and, and vote. I know people say the votes are rigged, but get out and vote. Yeah. Make a difference in your community. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. Because if not, it's not going to change people. And I'm, 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 I'm tired. And, and, I mean, even if you're outraged, just being able to speak and say, "Hey, I don't like this." Tap mm-hmm. into your neighbor. Hey, I don't like this. You, oh, you don't like this either. Okay, now that's two. You don't like this either. That's three. three. Let's mm-hmm. just keep going, man. Let's not stop at this. And just to give you guys, you know, I know a lot of people are trying to see what I can do. Some people can't get out and, right. and protest to do different things, but. I mean, right now, I know... Oh, it is um, still out there. Exactly. <laughs> I know uh, George Floyd's family have, does have a warrior fund on GoFundMe campaign. So we'll make sure we, we post that. Yes. Um, I know a lot of lawyers and different organizations are paying the bill for those people that are peacefully protesting. Right. Shut up, being Cap, arrested. man. He yeah. was the first one to come out. And, uh, say, and, and he's know. paying, yeah. So, I mean, and now it's going for everyone. People have so much to say mm-hmm. about all this, this, and about this. And then now it's just like, wow. He he, he, said, he stood on it. He sacrificed everything he, he had. gave it up. And continued to do it. So, man, let's not be silent on this. Yes. Don't think that your idea is too small. Don't feel like, if you feel like, hey, I can't do it, get your neighbor. Get yeah. your best friend. Get someone to join in this mission, but man, let's together. come together and evoke this change. Don't believe this narrative that everyone is out here looting and trying to destroy and deface. Yes, people are outraged. But the looters sometimes don't look like me and you. I exactly. tell you that. Yeah, trust trust yes. right. So don't believe everything that we're seeing on here, but go out there and make a difference. Man. I know that we can do this together and it's going to take everyone. And that, that's all I have to say about it. I'll let y'all have the last words, man. Hey, man, uh, you you said enough, man. Just, hey, if you're outraged, you know, don't let nobody tell you how to feel. But once that outrage settles down, what is the game plan? We need to have a game plan. So, okay, cool. We did this. Now what are we going to do to continue to apply pressure? Right now, you know, I know a lot of people see the police out, the National Guard. They are scared because they, they we are fighting back, you mm-hmm. know, literally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to have a plan and be strategic. It's like Killer Mike said, you know, get a plan. Execute it because we cannot allow. It. I I refuse going to twenty twenty one and we doing the same thing. No, like I just refuse that. We need 
we have the opportunity now. Make a difference. Let's go. Go and close this out, man. Hey, man. So I just want to drop this. Unity can spread the wildfire and change. Yes. If we take all of our voices, take all of our resources, take everything that we have and put that together instead of allowing those that are up against us to spread us apart, I promise you we can spread the wildfire of change. Be on the lookout for Blackout Day on July 7th. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a day where we can all come together and do that. We can one band, one sound, yeah. one, one, you know, one heartbeat. Absolutely. The, the heartbeat of our ancestors, the heartbeat of those that have died. Because keep in mind, there have been black men and women who have died before this day. And I'm sure later on the, with the system doesn't change as it won't right now, there will be. But we're going to be the part to Fuel that change. Be the change. We're going to be the change we want to see. Right. And we're going to do everything we can to make that happen. Of if, uh, that I have in my air, Absolutely. everything in my lungs to make that happen. Not for me, but for my future. For my, for for my, my legacy. Wow. For my kids. Absolutely. For my future grandkids. Yeah. For everything in my bloodline to come in before me and yeah. after me. And so we're going to do it, man. Yeah. So, man, let's make sure that we are being part of this change. Use your voices. To, to speak out, use these social media platforms to spread awareness, but let's get involved. Let's get our jerseys dirty in the game. Yes, let's sir. just make sure we're making a difference. Absolutely. And as always, let's make sure we take it black to the base. Peace and love.